Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper with part one of a two-part video series on near vertical incident skywave antennas, specifically the military antenna AS2259GR. Now I've already taken the components out of the bag and did a partial setup, but this antenna has seven tubes, it erects to be 12 feet tall, and the tubes connect to each other, forming the coax cable in the center of the tube there as you can see, and there's a pin down in there, if you can see that. And they plug into each other. And I did a partial, not complete or correct antenna setup to give you an idea what it looks like. You have a base plate, and the sections connect to each other. And then there's a mass section at the top with two dipole antennas. And the dipole antennas actually form the guy wires for this Nivis antenna. And I just laid them out and wrapped them up with the log there just to hold it up for this video. Part one of this video is not actually setting up or operating this antenna. Part one is going to be Nivis theory, but I wanted to show you the physical antenna to give you some perspective before we rolled into the theory portion of the Nivis antennas. So that's kind of what a Nivis antenna looks like. You have a base plate. The mass, which is actually the conductor or a piece of coax in the form of a pipe. And then two dipoles which create four legs forming the guy wires to hold up the antenna. So we'll pause here and we'll roll into the theory portion of part one. Before we get into the Nibis theory, I wanted to review the radio bands and actually where Nibis propagation takes place. For those of you who own ocean radios, the dual bander radios, these two red arrows point at the bands where those radios operate, the 2 meter or VHF band and the 70 centimeter or UHF band. For those of you who use citizen band or CB radios, those radios operate at 27 megahertz between the 12 meter and 10 meter amateur radio bands. But where Nivis propagation is applicable is the greater high frequency or HF radio bands, or sometimes called shortwave. And it's these frequencies that will actually go up and bounce off the ionosphere in the atmosphere. And the ionosphere has four layers the D, E, F1, and F2 layers, and they start at about 30 miles above the surface and go as high as 250 miles above the surface. And that's during the day. At night, the two lower levels, D and E, disappear, and the two upper levels, F1 and F2, merge to create a single layer. And here's an older chart again from an older field manual that actually shows you how these radio waves propagate or go up. The first wave we're going to talk about is the ground wave, and this is the line of sight transmission from, let's say, your handheld radio. That comes off your antenna and follows the surface of the earth until the horizon comes up and the radio waves disappear and get too weak. And this is the type of communications that take place with your FRS or GMRS radios or your ocean radios going through a repeater or just talking between two radios. For the high frequency or HF bands, you start getting skip and those radio waves go up and bounce off the ionosphere and come back down further away from your transmitter getting you that great distance across the state or across the country or across the world and this skip happens more than once so you can see TX which stands for transmitter you get a skip and it comes down at R1 or receiver 1 and then R2 which is further away receiver 2 but this also creates a phenomenon called the skip zone and that's the section between the skip that doesn't get any radio communications. And Nivis or Near Vertical Incident Skywave antennas are designed to address this skip zone area to increase the angle of radiation on the antenna to get radio waves down into the skip zone. So how do they do this? Well typically looking at this radiation pattern chart you see the red line that represents the antenna let's say on your handheld radio and your radio waves go out on the side horizontally along the surface of the earth creating that ground wave. What a Nivis antenna attempts to do is change the radiation angle so the radio waves point straight up at the ionosphere so when it bounces down the bounce is closer into you rather than further away. So to use a pool table analogy the lower the angle of your shot creates the greater distance the ball will bounce down on the other side of the table. With Nivis, we want to increase the angle of the bank shot and get that ball to come down closer to where it originated from. So we create a sharper angle and decrease the distance on the bank shot. 
Now here's from that old Army manual that shows two radio stations using Nivis antennas in Vietnam to get over a mountain line or ridge line. And I'm not quite sure if you can see it too clearly, but you can see the four legs of the antenna. So these two stations are set up with Nivis. They're using HF radio waves to bounce signals off the ionosphere and come down on the other side of the mountain to communicate with the other station. So why is this applicable to preppers or emergency communications? Well, for those of you who are thinking about using HF radios or already have HF radios, the skip can be an issue in certain areas. So here I have a shot of Winchester, Virginia, and the red dot in the center represents the ground wave. Now this isn't 100% accurate to scale, but it's just to give you an idea. So the red dot represents right around the immediate vicinity of the transmitter. That's the ground wave. But then you get the first skip, and you get that ring where there's no radio coverage. The first skip is further out, represented by the lighter red circle. Then you get the second, third, fourth skip, represented by the yellow area. Well, for Nivis antennas, if you need to get into that area where there is no coverage, you change the angle, the angle of the bank shot, and now you bring those radio waves closer to the original source, and you can cover those areas you couldn't cover before. Now this Nivis application does impact your ability to communicate further away, so you need to pick the antenna for the type of transmission you need to make, but this is the, the issue Nivis antennas are trying to address, to get radio signals into those skip zones for stations that are too far away for ground wave, but not far enough away for the first skip, you can get communications with those stations in that skip zone, and that's the purpose of the Nivis antenna. Again, go into that old Army manual. I'm sorry for the quality of the images, but they're pretty blurry. I think the manual is actually printed during the Vietnam era. You see a soldier kneeling down at a radio with the AS2259GR Nivis antenna, and the blue arrow in the center showing you little knots, the sections where they plug in. And then the elements coming off on the side are actually the dipole leads that also form the guy wires for this mast. So that's the setup for the Nivis antenna. If you're looking to buy a Nivis antenna, you can find them online. Again, I'll put a part number down below in the description. It's the AS2259GR, and this is what it should look like when you get it. You'll get seven sections, a mast head that has the antenna elements, and a carrying bag. Now, one of the things you need to look for is the type of base plate that comes with it or make sure it has a base plate or you need to buy one separately. And there's three common base plates for the military version of this antenna. The one on the left is the high power and I'm going to move the mouse around here and there's two thumb nuts here where you can actually put the cable to and go to your transmitter. And I believe this is rated up to a thousand watts. This middle base plate has a little BNC connector on it here. And this is a low power base plate, only 10 watts. There's a, a ballon wire inside this base plate here. And on the right hand side, this is probably what you're going to find in the bag. And this is the adapter that was designed to screw on top of the Vietnam era radio. And I can't remember, it was PRC, I can't remember what the number, but each antenna typically ships with the adapter for that specific radio. So this is the end of part one of the Nivis antenna video series. I'll make another video where we actually set this antenna up. But this is to give you some background and some theory on what a Nivis antenna is and why you would use it and how it can apply to emergency communications. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper with part one of Nivis antennas.